Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. and we are back for another tutorial and this time we are going to go over two amazing brand new star scripts by the guys at Another Astro Channel and Bill Blanchin. Now these two tools are going to allow you to not only handle your stars in a more efficient way but also give you better results. We're going to eliminate pixel math and make your life a lot easier. Now before we jump in I just want to let you guys know these are totally free and I've included the link to support these guys in the description below. We really want to support people that support this community. That's what this channel is all about. So go ahead and leave them a few dollars if you can. And you can support this channel by liking, subscribing, and commenting below. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so here we are in Pixinsight, and I know we have a lot of things open, so I'll go over why that is. So we have the RGB star image here of the clamshell, and then we have the HARGB version, which we're going to transfer these nice RGB stars over to this image so we combine the best of both worlds. I got this HARGB image by combining this RGB with this HA data from my monochrome using the narrowband RGB script. And as you can see, I've already done a starless version of both the RGB and the HA RGB data. And you can see the stars are much different. When you combine narrowband filters that are much harsher, either if it's an all narrowband image or when they're combined with RGB stars, uh, they tend to not come out as good. And this is a good illustration of that. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Now these are the stars based on using star exterminator, so that removal process. And so we're going to be able to compare that with this new one so you can see why we're doing this versus the old way and see how much better the stars actually look. You keep a lot more of the color and characteristics by using this star screen script versus the old way of just using either pixel math to add them back in or saving two separate files into Photoshop and using the screen blend blend mode to combine them where you'd lose uh, some of the color and detail in the stars. So the first thing that we have to do is go ahead and install this script. And so what you're going to want to do there is just copy the uh, address below on the description and go to manage repositories. You're going to click add here on the left side. And then just for example, there's a star reduction one. Click OK and you hit OK again. And then you're going to go into resources again. And instead of manage repositories, you're going to click check for updates. Now, mine's not going to find any, so I'm just going to hit cancel. It will find one when you do it. And then do the same thing with the screen stars repository. Now, in order to get them to fully install, you're going to have to close PixInsight. It'll ask if you want to install an update. Obviously, select yes. And then go ahead and reopen it. So now we're ready to go and start using the first uh, utility script, which is all about adding and removing stars. And that's going to be the screen stars tool. So the first thing you have to do, like I said, is you have to get a traditional starless image. So you can use Starnet or Star Exterminator. I use Star Exterminator. And what we're going to do then is in the new tool here, and this one is all about adding or removing stars. And so the first thing we're going to do is do star removal. In the starry view, we're going to do this image, the RGB with stars. And then in the starless view, we're going to do the one that we just removed using star exterminator, the RGB starless. Okay, I go ahead and leave the check mark uh, checked for enable reverse stretch. I've gotten the best results with that thus far. You can experiment, but especially in stretched or nonlinear state, that's what's recommended. And the little preview is clicked on so you can see what the stars look like. And as you can see, when you compare them to the stars that we got from Star Exterminator, uh, much more color and vibrance to them. And then, yeah, we'll name these RGB stars new. And we'll go ahead and execute that. Okay, so now we have our stars that we're looking for. Like I said, when we compare that versus the old way of doing it, you can see they're obviously much better. And so now what we want to do is we want to add these stars to this HARGB image here. And so we'll go back into the script. And instead of star removal, 
we're going to choose star replacement. And now we're going to start with the starless view, which is going to be the HARGB2 starless. Don't ask me where these names come from. I got a little extra on them, it looks like. And then we're going to add in the stars new. So then it's going to give us the same uh, little preview. And we're going to go ahead and execute that. And so boom, just like that, we're able to have an HARGB uh, image with the really nice RGB stars. And it's all done here, no pixel math, no saving two files and bringing them over into Photoshop. Much simpler, much easier, and a better overall result. So, all right, so let's go to the second tool, which is star reduction. And for the sake of simplicity, we'll use the image that we just created. So you're going to go back into utilities, star reduction. And this tool is really cool. Like I'm probably the most excited about this one. Went ahead and choose the um, stars new as the target view. And the starless is going to be the same starless image that we used before. And the first thing I want to do is click this little gearbox here so that we have the opportunity to enable small star protection. This takes a little while. It has to analyze the image and kind of find all those little small stars. So it might take a couple seconds to do that. So we'll, we'll wait for that. Okay, so once you click that gearbox and it does the analyzing that it needs to, then you have the ability to check this box right here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and drag an area like this to do a preview and I'm choosing an area with some small stars so this is with small star protection enabled if I uncheck it you can see all those small stars kind of go away so if we turn it back on versus off and what this basically is doing is if you have it off it reduces all the stars kind of equally but if you want to save the small stars and really just have it target the bigger stars you can leave it on I'm gonna leave it off for right now and then under the, the reduction method, you have four different options. The most popular, uh, according to the guys that created it, is probably going to be the star method. Um, and as you see, you have different modes, strong, moderate, and soft. And then what's going to cause the biggest uh, change is the number of iterations. So if I go from one to two to three, as you can see, they get quite a bit smaller. And if I go to strong, it kind of almost multiplies the effect. So for me, I really kind of like the soft look. It looks a little bit more natural and probably more like one or maybe even two. For me, I like to really zoom out to see the impact. So you can see one, two, and then three is getting pretty close to starless. With the lightness method, this is basically going to Instead of shrinking the stars in terms of size, it's more going to reduce the luminance of them. And so basically it's going to make them smaller by making them less bright. So again, we can go soft versus strong. And then we can change the number of iterations and it does the same thing. So I'm not going to go through all four of these strong, soft, medium, and the number of iterations. You guys can go ahead and do that. And then what you're going to do is then create a new image. So I'm going to do create new star reduced image and we're going to do H A R G B. We'll call it final because we've done everything that we need to do. And as you can see, the previews enabled and then show preview. You can always turn that off, but there's here's with it off. Here's with it on. So you can see the overall change. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark to go ahead and execute and give us our new final image. And then we can kind of compare both of them not in preview mode, just so you guys can see. All right. So it did give us the stars layer and you can see here side by side the difference. And guys, I think that this is even better than Blur Exterminator. It really does a nice job maintaining the star color and shape and characteristics 
while reducing it and even transferring it from one image to the other using the combination of these two new tools. So please support them, guys. Go give them some love. And hopefully this was helpful to you as always. Comment, like, subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. As always, clear skies. Thank you.